Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Let's talk about neurology and specifically how do you interpret the cerebrospinal fluid findings. Well the key thing you want to remember is first you want to look at uh, the cells. Is there a lot of neutrophils, PMNs? If it's greater than a thousand you can almost bet that it's some sort of bacterial meningitis. For the viral causes usually the values are normal for the cells, glucose, protein and the pressure. Also with bacterial meningitis you'll have a decreased glucose value and um, with a pseudotumor cerebri you'll have a normal cell count. With Ghislaine Barr you'll have an increase in protein and with cerebral hemorrhage you'll have RBCs that are bloody on the cell count. With multiple sclerosis typically you'll see a normal pattern across the cells, glucose, protein and the pressure. So again, it's important to know that with multiple sclerosis on the electrophoresis of the CSF, you can look for the oliclonal bands due to the increased IgG production and an increased level of myelin basic protein during the active demyelination. Other important points, do not do a lumbar puncture in patients with acute head trauma or an intracranial hypertension such as signs of papal edema. Tuberculosis and fungal meningitis have low glucose values, less than 50, with high cells, greater than 100, and they're predominantly lymphocytes. You want to watch for a positive India ink preparation for cryptococcus, and these are key findings that you want to understand. So on the board exam, again, increase in lymphocytic count, think viral, fungal, or TB. If you look at increase in cell counts with neutrophils, think bacterial, increase in protein, think about Guillain bar, and oligonal bands, think about multiple sclerosis. Again, the CSF finding is going to be extremely helpful when you're looking at the question and you're trying to narrow down your differential. Some of the other high yield points for the neurology board review section includes headaches. Keep in mind that tension headaches most commonly occur in the frontal or occipital region and are bilateral. You treat them with stress reduction and acetaminophen or NSAIDs. With cluster headaches, you have unilateral severe tender pattern that occurs in clusters and oxygen is used to abort the cluster headache. With migraine headaches, you look for an aura or a photophobia with nausea vomiting and you treat it with prophylaxis with uh, anti-migraine medication such as sumatriptan. For tumors or mass you look for progressive neurological symptoms like papal edema, intracranial hypertension, mental status changes and headaches every day. Again these are classically worse in the morning and a CT or MRI should help you make the diagnosis. For pseudotumor cerebri it may mimic a tumor or a mass and patients cause um, you know, increased intracranial hypertension, papal edema, daily headaches that are worse in the morning and are accompanied by nausea and vomiting. They're found in young obese females who are unlikely to have a brain tumor. CT and MRIs are negative and pseudotumor cerebri can cause permanent vision loss typically treated with supportive care such as weight loss and large doses of vitamin A tetracyclines and withdrawal from corticosteroids um, are possible causes. So vitamin A, tetracyclines and withdrawal from corticosteroids, that's a possible cause of pseudotumor cerebri. If a patient comes to you with signs of a fever, Brudinsky's or Koenig sign that are positive and CSF findings of meningitis, then um, you're going to you know look at the headache differential in that as well. So tension, cluster, migraine, tumor mass, pseudotumor cerebri, and meningitis are some of your key causes of headaches. In addition to these, patients can have the worst headache of their life called the subarachnoid hemorrhage which shows a uh, CT scan with grossly bloody CSF and an angiogram which will show an aneurysm also understand that patients can have severe trauma history. Let's talk about myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis again is an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease that destroys acetylcholine receptors usually presents in women 20 to 40. Look for ptosis, diplopia, and general muscle fatigability at the end of the day. 
That's the key finding. Tensilon test is the key test for the boards. An injection of edrophonium, a short-acting anticholinesterase, improves muscle weakness. You want to watch for associated thymomas, and most patients improve after removal of the thymus, which is considered part of the standard treatment. Antibodies to acetylcholine receptors are usually present in the serum, and you treat it with long-acting anticholinesterase, such as pyrigostigmine or neostigmine. Now, Eaton-Lambert syndrome is a paraneoplastic syndrome classically seen with small cell lung cancers characterized by muscle weakness with sparing of the extraocular muscles. So myasthenia gravis almost always has extraocular muscle involvement, um, whereas in Eaton-Lambert syndrome, which is a paraneoplastic due to small cell carcinoma, you have muscle weakness, but there's no extraocular involvement. Eaton-Lambert syndrome has a different mechanism of disease and a different response um, to the nerve stimulation. With the nerve stimulation, myasthenia worsens, but with Eaton-Lambert, it actually improves over time. So those are the key findings that you want to understand for the boards. Also, don't forget that organophosphate poisonings um, are a cause of myasthenia-like muscle weakness, usually um, occurring with patients who have agriculture exposure. And symptoms of parasympathetic access are also present like meiosis, excessive bronchial secretions, urinary urgency, and diarrhea. Edrophonium causes worsening of the muscle weakness. Okay, So the test, again, that we want to re remember is edrophonium causing a worsening of the muscle weakness for organophosphate poisoning. And the treatment is atropine and praledoxamine. Aminoglycosides... Um, in high doses can also cause myasthenia like muscular weakness and prolong the effects of muscular blockade and anesthesia. So let's review some of these very high yield topics. Myasthenia gravis, diagnosis, tensilon test, injection of edrophonium will uh, improves the muscle weakness and um, also you want to watch for thymomas and extraocular involvements and there's antibodies to acetylcholine receptors, and you treat it with anticholinergics like pyridostigmine and neostigmine. With Eaton-Lambert syndrome, usually you have extraocular muscle sparing with impaired release of acetylcholine from the nerves, and Eaton-Lambert syndrome improves with repetitive nerve stimulation. Also, organophosphate poisoning will show in patients with agricultural exposure having a myasthenia-like muscle weakness that gets worse towards the end of the day with um, signs of meiosis, excessive bronchial secretions, urinary urgency, and diarrhea. And edrophonium causes worsening of the muscle weakness here. And the treatment is with atropine and pralidoxamine. Also remember, aminoglycosides may cause myasthenia-like muscular weakness and prolong the effects of the muscular blockade in anesthesia. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures. That's www.comlexflashcards.com for daily lectures on how to get through medical school and good luck in your preparation for the boards.